Hello from San Clemente, Ecuador. We're going to try this as an alternative to writing out something for you to read off the internet. And now you can see exactly what's going on, who we are, and how old and battered we look after all this nonsense. The, uh, the one thing that's really hit us since the, the accident of falling down the stairs, right? let me show you the stairs. Uh, you can see them over there. There's 13 of them and uh, ended up coming down all 13 of them and that's what's created the problem today but I think it's getting better to you mm -hmm. Rosemary does the, the nursing on my legs uh, ankles every day uh, she mixes the, the silver and the medibo no mebo mebo, mebo mm -hmm. cream to put on the wounds and you sure. said they're getting smaller and I have to do it now because Giovanni's looking after the COVID patients in Bahia, so he won't come near us. Why, why is My that? Job. Why is that? Why won't he come near us? He doesn't want to risk uh, bringing the virus into us. And what about uh, what about his his home life? What's happening there? He was trying to find another place to live while he spent that month in the hospital with the patients, but we haven't uh, heard from him since then. I guess we'll probably hear from him uh, shortly because we've got some money that we want to help him with uh, to get his car out of the, the garage where he had it fixed. Today, we went out today, together. So good to go on an outing. <laughs> <laughs> so, ah, so where did we go? We went to the bank. <laughs> and then we went to the store and we got four dozen eggs. What, do you eat a lot of eggs? No, you do. Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> Yes, we do like our eggs, and uh, so our protein. We, we go, yeah, good protein for us. How much weight have you lost? Uh, ten pounds. She can't afford to lose ten pounds, folks. <laughs> I can. So, the hundred plus that I lost, we're uh, trying to keep off with a, a good diet, and uh, it makes you feel a lot better when you're not carrying a hundred pounds around on your on your frame. So. What's el what else is happening down here that's exciting? Not too much. It's pretty quiet. When you go to the taxi, you, you see how quiet it really is, don't you? After 2 o'clock, nobody's allowed out, so it's really quiet. We just stay behind our gated community and walk around. Thankfully, we have lots of room to walk the dog, and but we miss going to the beach. Yeah, you can only go to the beach in the morning and then... You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. You may even get kicked off by the policia if they find you down there. But so far, Rosie's only been scared once. And they didn't really say anything to her, so Posey goes down there. Where's Posey? Uh, we should get our... She's uh, chewing her chew. Posey! She's chewing her chew. Okay, she gets a chew. Actually, she goes and picks her own chew out takes it over the carpet and comes back and gets another one and takes it over the carpet and comes back and gets another one until you stop her and then she settles down. So that's what she's doing right now. Uh, what else is uh, going on? What, what, do, what do we want to talk, talk about? We want to talk about the contacts with people from way back from our first church at a Bible school. We've heard from people from every church. It's been very encouraging to hook up with them again because it's been how many years? Well, since 1977 when we came to to Ontario to, to Markdale Baptist Church. And uh, just yesterday, I think, or the day before, we heard from uh, a lady who was part of our congregation there and haven't talked to her in uh, quite a few years. So I babysat two of her babies was she a teacher? She was a teacher. Yeah. And he and her husband. Yeah. They were both teachers. Uh, I think she's in ministry with the Alliance Church, or that's the last I heard. But uh, anyways, it was good to hear from her. And ironically, her one son is working with the company that's building, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, creative, uh, creative Space. Space. Chad's. In Midhurst. And Chad's involved in that. So they, it's funny how all our lives just sort of Go in a big circle around each other. Who else have we heard from? Uh, we've heard from a couple people from uh, New Brunswick, from the Bible, what was that one called? 
Baptist. Uh, St. Stephen, uh, no, Milltown Baptist. Milltown Baptist, yeah. We yeah. heard from, uh, who, what was her name? Debbie. Debbie. Used to be Debbie Lacey, but it's now, it's now Debbie E. And uh, we also heard from Rosemary Young. Uh, she was a young girl when we were there, and Debbie was, was uh, I guess, a young, around our, a young mother while we were there. Uh, in fact, I think it was Debbie's son that one day after church, we were standing out under the portico, and she said to Joey, Joey, do you know who this is? And he said, it's God. <laughs> I've been called a lot of things before, but I've never been called God. So then she went on to explain, uh, every Sunday they say they're going to God's house, and I'm the guy at the front, so I must be God. So <laughs> she explained to him I wasn't God, which made me feel a lot better, because that's a lot of responsibility to be God. He was uh, only about three. Yeah, he's about three years old. <laughs> uh, so who else have we come in contact with? Oh, man. A lot of people. A lot of people. Uh, our friend back in Ontario started a GoFundMe page, and it's been through that GoFundMe page that we've been uh, contacting people that we haven't seen for a while. Uh, in fact, there's people that are are coming on the GoFundMe page that we don't even know, but they know somebody who knows somebody, so they've contributed, and that was cool. Uh, this whole fall has, uh, has not only been uh, physically demanding on, on both of us, but it's also been financially demanding. So that, that GoFundMe page has helped us a lot. A lot of drugs aren't covered. So every time you go to the drugstore, it's a, it could be 100 or $200. And uh, just it's added up to a large amount. Yeah. But uh, we just want to tell you that we're encouraged. Uh, the wounds on my ankles, What tell them what the wounds the, are doing. The ulcers are getting smaller and smaller. And the doctor that came with the nurse that uh, comes three times a week, he, the doctor comes once in a while. He's, the last time he said that uh, there would be no need for plastic surgery is what he said the time before that. He said well, he's probably going to have to have uh, plastic surgery to cover the area because they were deep holes. But now they're just about healed straight over with the rest of your skin. Mm -hmm. So they're getting better. So we're thankful for that. So as, as you pray and we pray and we do what we're supposed to do with, with the ointments and uh, the bandages, so every second day I get the bandages changed and a new uh, uh, ointment put on, uh, it gets very uh, tedious and it actually uh, gets painful sometimes, but uh, it's good because it's, we're slowly seeing uh, success. So we thank you for what you've done for us, uh, both financially and more importantly through prayer. And we believe in prayer, and we believe that, that God is, uh, is touching these ankles. Uh, we're not into that whole uh, healthy, wealthy, and wise philosophy that says if you're a Christian, you should be healthy, and you should be wealthy, and you should be smart. Uh, <laughs> not any of that. <laughs> smart doesn't go with it, so we know that that's not true. Uh, but but it is. It's a false doctrine, and uh, we're proof of that false doctrine. That we we believe that we know Christ is our Savior, and uh, and yet we still go through some of these trials and tribulations. But He takes care of us through them. Many times He's sent people to us when we've needed them, and we call them our angels. That uh, just at the time that we need somebody or something. There they are, ready to help us. It's pretty neat. Well, today's a fine example of that whole situation. Jennifer. Jennifer is a registered nurse from the United States that we met, her and her husband. They're missionaries. And we met them, uh, I guess, I don't know, a year ago? We met them the first time we were here in January for our vacation. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the first time we met them. So she, uh, she's been helping us with the whole physical part of it. And uh, if we have any questions about it, she'll come down and, uh, and give us a hand uh, helping us understand it. And then today, uh, we got a taxi and went into San Clemente to the local co-op bank. And she interpreted for us so that we could get some money out. 
uh, that's the only place you can get money is through this co-op, but they've shut down the whole bank. You can't get the ATM anymore. So you have to go through a, to a wicket that, uh, that she was able to talk to the clerk behind there and help us out. So that was good. So we got all the printouts for uh, what we've paid, what we haven't paid, and uh, it was good to have her there. So she's a big help. Then Mickey, uh, Mickey's been a huge physical help. Uh, when I couldn't put the water jugs in, he would come down and put them in for us. Uh, he came down and uh, I can't count the times that he's picked me up. When you were falling. When I was falling about every other day, I was falling down. Uh, so that was good. So, you know, God sends the people that you need. They've, uh, they've taken us for doctor's appointments and Jennifer's translated. They've gotten us into certain doctors that we would never have been able to get in ourselves. The nurse that's coming was part of Jennifer. Yeah, Giovanni. Me, Giovanni yeah. made Giovanni come. And uh, every time he came, the, uh, I can't tell you the, uh, what the pain was like because it was huge. But uh, there was no freezing, and he would have to dig down into the wounds to get the black out every second day, every third day. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think I chewed up about two pillows right on my stomach while he dug in my ankles. And then uh, Very painful. one day we went in to see, I think the doctor came, and then the next time we went into the hospital where he works, and it's, it's a public hospital, it's for those people that don't have any insurance, we call it the hospital under the bridge. And we got there and they got a wheelchair and then they just went lickety split through all the little labyrinths in this hospital to this room, whipped into this room. They shut the door behind me real quick because I wasn't supposed to be there. We're not supposed to be treated by them. So Jennifer got us in there. Jennifer got us in there, yeah. So then the doctor, what what is he? Uh, he's a... Uh, endo no, no, he's a... Uh, Gastrologist. Gastrologist. Uh, he came in, and uh, he gave me a local in my feet, and then they they worked on my feet again. Uh, it was absolutely wonderful uh, to have the, the pain blocked out. In Canada or the United States, you would never be put through that. No, you'd have, you'd have had a block every time you went in, but uh, this is Ecuador. So then, uh, so it slowly got better, where he didn't have to dig anymore, he just had to... Yeah. He hasn't for quite a while. Just said, because they had to cut off the, uh, if you go to the GoFundMe page, you'll, you'll see the pictures of my ankles. They had to cut all the dead skin off. They had to use a razor blade. Uh, it was horrendous. So anyways, uh, since then, it's just been a matter of uh, cleaning off my ankles and my legs and then uh, filling the wounds up with this concoction that he puts together. Uh, he, he Actually, his name is, uh, the wound healer and uh, everybody knows Giovanni is the guy that to call if you need the wounds healed that's what he basically does in the hospital is he looks after people's wounds so uh, he was a, a godsend for sure so and he, and he doesn't speak any uh, English no. so we've had fun <laughs> trying to we have a, a phone that has translation translating on it so we uh, translate back and forth with his phone and our phone, and we managed to get through. What's the first thing he says when he comes through the door? Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's one of his English That's words. That's the first English word he learned was okay. Now, since then, uh, how are you? And then good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am fine. Thank you. So now he knows that too. So. Oh, and finished. Oh, finished. Oh, finished. that's the best word I've heard him say. <laughs> finished. That means I, this. two thumbs up. It means I can get off my stomach and uh, he's all done his bandaging. So It's, it's funny. It's yeah. a fun experience and a good experience. So sadly to say, I miss him. him. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going through for an evangelist. That's what he wants to do when he's finished his nursing is be an evangelist. So he's quite the guy. Well, I guess that's about it. Yeah, nothing else is new. We, uh, we're still under the red warning with the virus, which means nothing has changed. Our, uh, our curfew is still 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 5 o'clock in the morning. So it uh, becomes very quiet quickly. <laughs> and we've been here for almost two and a half years now. 
And uh, so when this is all over and we get the go ahead, uh, it probably won't be this Christmas, uh, but uh, the next year we'll, we're planning on making a trip back to Ontario to see everybody. Not at Christmas time. Not at Christmas it's time. It's too though. cold. Yeah, it's too cold. We, it's, we've become uh, Ecuadorians. Yeah, we can't take can't the cold them. anymore. Put the air conditioning on at some point in time, we go, are you getting cold? Yeah, we oh, better turn it off. So, <laughs> uh, so that's where it sits. So thank you for everything you've done. And uh, uh, we do look forward to seeing you sometime in the near future or far future. Uh, but thank you. Yes, for sure. Thank you for your prayers. God and bless. Your encouragement. Okay. As Giovanni would say, okay. Mm -hmm. We are. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.